though he was free the first 40 years of their imprisonment, Ishamayel was eventually pulled beyond the seals and confined with the other Forsaken, where he remained for a thousand years, until his unique circumstance saw him enter the world for another four decades. Seeking to sow chaos and violence wherever he went, Ishamayel, taking the name Baal Zaman, led shadow spawn armies on a great campaign through the Westlands during the height of the Trollic Wars, causing significant devastation wherever they ventured, destroying a number of nations including the great kingdom of Manetherin. After his 40 years of freedom ended, Ishamayel was once again pulled into the Dark One's prison, leaving the Trollocs and Shadowspawn leaderless, becoming a diminishing threat which gradually retreated back into the Great Blight. After another thousand years, Ishamayel returned, this time posing as the shrewd nobleman Jalwin Morad, who rose to become Arthur Hawkwing's chief advisor, the man who ruled over a great empire which unified nearly every realm in the Westlands. Exploiting this prominent position, Ishamayel talked Hawkwing into banning Aes Sedai from his court, laying siege to Tarvalin, sending armies across the Arith Ocean to conquer the continent of Shan Chan, and in the end, convinced him to refuse healing when ill, leading to the High King's early death. With Hawkwing gone and the Empire descending into chaos and civil war, Ishamayel ensured no peace was possible by arranging the deaths of the three most powerful candidates who might have succeeded the deceased ruler. Vanishing for another thousand years, Ishamayel this time returned during the Age of the Dragon Reborn, but was now suffering from severe madness, posing as the Dark One himself in the form of Baal Zaman, appearing with eyes and mouth engulfed in flames. Knowing the seals of the Dark One's prison were weakening and his fellow Forsaken were starting to escape captivity, Eshamayel worked diligently to organize their forces and at last conclude his business with Luz Theron Telamon in the hopes of either destroying his new body or preferably turning him to the shadow. Narrowing down the possible candidates to three young men from the village of Emmons Field, Ishamayel started to appear in the dreams of Randall Thor, Perrin Bara, and Matram Coffin in 997 NE, but was unable to corrupt them as the Aes Sedai Moraine Damodrid found them first and prepared them for this danger, starting them on a long and perilous journey which culminated in the final battle of Tarmin Gaiden, fought for the fate of mankind. Eventually learning that Randall Thor was the Dragon Reborn, each of the Forsaken did what they could to hinder his progress, but were forced to submit to the leadership of Ishamayel, who was named Nablus, or second in command to the Dark One. After appearing in his dreams, Ishamayel confronted Rand on several occasions, first at the Eye of the World, a special pool of Sidene energy where he was defeated by the dragon, and then in the Battle of Falma, where Rand was again victorious, though he took a serious wound which never healed. Next, he confronted the dragon in the Stone of Tear, where Rand used the Song Rial Kalindor, a powerful crystal sword, to at last kill his enemy, destroying Ishamayel's body. Yet death was no bar for the Dark One, and so Ishamayel was reincarnated in the body of Moradin, appearing calm and withdrawn with a fatalistic attitude which stripped him of all previous desires and ambitions. As Moradin, he no longer wished to rule the Dark One's remade world, and so instead fought for the Shadow in the hope of being rewarded with a final death to ensure he would never again be reborn. Though they were sworn enemies, Moradin and Randall Thor were linked when their Balefire attacks crossed paths in Shadar Logoth, creating a strong connection allowing them to sense each other and share dreams. After leading and organizing the armies of darkness to confront the forces of light in the final battle of Tarmin Gaiden, Moradin fought Randall Thor one last time in the Pit of Doom at Sheol Ghul, where the dragon, with the aid of the Aes Sedai Moiraine Damodrid and Nynaeve Almira, defeated their enemy and resealed the Dark One's prison. Yet unlike the incomplete success of the previous dragon Luz Theron Telamon, Rand was aided by female Aes Sedai and thus was able to use both Sidene and Sidar, shielded by the true power, to restore the Dark One's prison without touching him directly, thereby avoiding the taint of his corruption. Though Rand's body was grievously wounded in this final battle, his consciousness was able to switch bodies with Moradin, thereby granting them both their greatest desires, as the dragon continued living while Ishamayel was allowed to die.
After his release from imprisonment, Robin, who was part of a forsaken alliance with Lanfear, Grendel, and Samael, posed as Lord Gabriel to infiltrate Andor in 998 NE, where he built a power base as one of Queen Morghese's most loyal supporters. After helping put down riots against her, he was promoted to Chief Advisor, where he used a compulsion spell to become the Queen's lover. Making her a dutiful slave to his will, Robin became the ruler of Andor in all but name, even concocting a failed plot to kill the Queen's daughter, Elaine Tracon. Eventually, Morghese was able to break free of the spell and fled the palace, leaving Robin to rule over the realm, where he made plans to invade the nearby nation of Kyrian. Yet when Randolph Thor heard rumors that his romantic partner, Princess Elaine's mother, was killed by Robin, he attacked the capital and battled the Forsaken, ultimately killing him with Balefire, an attack so powerful it erased the target from existence and reversed their most recent actions. In this case, Robin killed several of Rand's companions, including the Taviran, Matrim Cawthon, but after the Forsaken's death, these actions were reversed and they were brought back to life. Killed with Balefire, Robin was completely burned from the pattern of reality and so could not be reincarnated. One of the most prominent members of the Forsaken, Demondrid, traveled beyond the Westlands to the nation of Shara, where he posed as a slave before rebelling against the established powers and freeing male Ayad from enslavement, men who could channel the One Power. Fulfilling the role of a prophesied hero for the Sharan people, Demondrid became known as Bao the Wild, rising to become their ruler alongside his lover Shendla, a female Ayad. Despite his serious demeanor and unyielding desire for vengeance against the dragon, Demondrid felt genuine affection for Shendla and planned to use his influence with the Dark One to protect Shara and the woman he loved. During the final battle of Tarmin Gaiden, Demondrid led his armies to fight for the Shadow, laying waste to the camp of the White Tower before facing off against the forces of Matrim Cawthon. Though Matt had little hope of victory, he used his unusual tactics to draw out the battle and prevent outright defeat. Meanwhile, Demondrid was personally challenged by a series of combatants, first fighting and killing the warrior prince, Gawain, in single combat before defeating his brother, Galad. Fortunately for the young man, Loghain, the former false dragon, now ally of Randall Thor, took over the fight, giving Galad time to flee. Though Loghain was a powerful channeler, he too lost in single combat and barely escaped with his life. Finally, Demondrid was challenged by the warder, Alan Mandragoran, heir to the throne of Malkir, a master swordsman who was already exhausted from battle when the duel began. As it was clear Demondrid had the advantage, Lan allowed himself to be impaled and severely wounded in order to get close enough to stab the Forsaken in the heart. With Demondrid dead, his armies were soon defeated. Freed from captivity, the chosen Samael posed as Lord Brand of Ilion, where he took over leadership of the Council of Nine, eventually becoming the most powerful noble in the nation. Aiding the Shido Aiel clan in their opposition to Randall Thor, he used them to invade and ravage the Westlands, which created animosity towards these desert warriors who supported the Dragon Reborn. After thousands of years waiting for the chance to face off against his hated enemy, Samael at last fought the dragon in Shadar Logoth, but was killed by Mashadar, a vile, deadly entity which grew in the cursed city. Unlike most of the other Forsaken, Aganor was sealed near the surface of their prison and thus suffered through their years of confinement, experiencing terrible nightmares while his body was ravaged by age and disfigurement. When he was at last released, he was physically old and frail, though still a powerful channeler, and being so close to the surface was one of the first to escape captivity. Partnering with the Forsaken Balthamal, the two traveled to the Eye of the World, where they were confronted by Randall Thor as he began his journey to become the Dragon Reborn. As they fought, Aganor made a fatal mistake by channeling too much of the One Power and was burned to ash in the attempt. The Dark One then reincarnated him in a new body with the name Osengar, and this time he posed as an Ashaman, or male version of the Aes Sedai, loyal to Randall Thor. 
Becoming one of the dragon's bodyguards, he protected him from danger, until at last he and other traitors tried and failed to assassinate their leader. Unable to complete his mission, Osengar fled and fought in the battle near Shadar Logoth, where he again attempted to kill Rand, only to fall victim to an Aes Sedai, suffering his final death. Similar to Aganor, the forsaken Balthamal was trapped near the surface of their imprisonment, and thus suffered terrible deformities when released, even losing the ability to speak. Traveling with his chosen companion, he too fought Rand and his friends, but was ultimately killed by the Nim Someshta, a sentient tree-like being who sacrificed his life to protect the Eye of the World. Reincarnated in a female body, Balthamal, now called Arangar, helped sow chaos and division among the Aes Sedai while spying on the rebel Amarlin's seat, Egwene Alvir. After rescuing the forsaken Mogidian from captivity and participating in the battle near Shadar Logoth, his position was eventually compromised, causing him to flee and take refuge with the forsaken Grendel. Yet when their location was discovered and attacked, Grendel betrayed Balthamal, leaving him to be killed by Balefire, thereby ending his existence once and for all. Upon release from captivity, the forsaken Asmodian posed as the Gleeman, Jason Natal, in order to follow the Dragon Reborn on his journey through the Aeol Waste. Sowing seeds of division and strife among the Aeol, Osmodian created false dragon marks on Kuladin of the Shido clan, setting him up as a rival to Randall Thor. After losing a battle to the dragon in the Aeol city of Ruidion, Osmodian's link to the Dark One was severed and his powers shielded, becoming a prisoner forced to train the dragon to channel, remaining by his side until a fateful night in the city of Camelin, when he ran into the forsaken Grendel in disguise, who killed him in order to prevent her true identity from being exposed. One of the weaker chosen who ended up aiding the forces of light, Osmodian was abandoned by the shadow and not reincarnated. Posing as Lord Salmon of Tyr, the forsaken Balal became a noble of great influence, acting as the unofficial ruler of the realm. Creating a plan to take the Songriel Kalandor for himself, Balal lured Randal Thor to Tyr so he would break the seals around the Crystal Sword. Engaging the Dragon Reborn in a duel, Balal proved the superior swordsman and was on the verge of victory until the Aes Sedai Moraine Damodred arrived and killed him with Balefire. One of the most ambitious and selfish of all the Forsaken, Lanfear's first and greatest priority was to track down the Dragon Reborn and win him over to her side. Stalking Randall Thor and interacting with him in various disguises, Lanfear also appeared in his dreams, doing all she could to seduce and entice her former lover. Involved in a great many schemes, she briefly infiltrated the White Tower and shielded the Forsaken Osmodian so he could be captured and forced to teach the dragon how to use his powers. Eventually, she revealed her true self to Rand in the Stone of Tear, trying to convince him that they could rule this world together, wielding such power they could destroy both the Dark One and Creator. Though her advances were rejected, she did not truly feel betrayed until learning that he slept with the Aiel woman Avienda, leading to a crazed confrontation in Kyrian where she caused much devastation. Yet before she could kill him, the Aes Sedai Moiraine Damodred arrived and tackled her through a magical Terangrial doorway, leading to the world of Elfin and Eelfin, dangerous mysterious creatures who fed on her magical energy. Eventually, Ishamael in the form of Moradin rescued and killed her so she could be reincarnated as the less powerful Sindane, serving as a slave to his will. Yet because of her many failures, she was relegated to a lower position, unable to even call herself a true Forsaken. Though she continued to pursue Rand's affection, he eventually made it clear he did not love her, turning Lanfear's possessive obsession into bitter, absolute hatred. Seeking the utter ruin of the forces of light, Sindane turned her attention to Perine Bara, attempting to seduce him with a compulsion spell, but the young man was able to resist and snapped her neck, killing Lanfear for a final time.
After escaping imprisonment, the forsaken Semiraj helped Balthamal infiltrate the rebel Aes Sedai, fought in the battle near Shadar Logoth, and posed as Anath Dorje, a truth speaker for Tuan Athame Kor Pindrag, heir to the throne of Shan Chan. Though she failed to manipulate the headstrong heiress, she was able to travel west to the continent of Shan Chan, where she assassinated the Empress, destroyed the government, and left the Empire in utter chaos. Returning eastward, she unsuccessfully attempted to kill Tuan in order to make her own candidate the new Empress. Formulating a new plan, she posed as Tuan and set up a meeting with Randall Thor, but her identity was exposed and mission once again failed. About to be taken into custody, she launched a fireball at Rand which amputated his hand, thereby fulfilling a part of the Dragon Reborn prophecy. Although many attempted to get information from her, she was largely able to resist their interrogation, though she did prove susceptible to humiliation. Eventually, she escaped captivity and gained access to a domination band, which she used to control Randall Thor, ordering him to kill his lover Min Farshaw. Enraged by this notion, the dragon summoned the true power and broke free of her control before killing her with Balefire. Infiltrating the White Tower, the Forsaken Masana led the Black Aja Aes Sedai, a secret sect within Tarvalin who worked for the Shadow. Doing much to encourage division, eventually leading to a schism and rebellion among the Aes Sedai, Masana made a terrible mistake when she ignored a summons to fight for the Dark One in the battle near Shadar Logoth, and thus was raped by a Merdral as punishment. Returning to her duties with the Aes Sedai, she attempted and failed to assassinate the Amarlin seat Egwene Alvir during a meeting in the Dream World. And while she was not physically killed, Masana's mind was shattered in the confrontation, leaving her in a vegetative state. Posing as Lady Basine of Aridoman, the Forsaken Grendel caused much strife during her time in the Western Realm and took various rulers, leaders, and influential people from the Westlands and beyond into her harem of mindless slaves, thereby creating chaos and struggles for power in the wake of their disappearances. She also helped Samael manipulate the Shido Aiel and participated in the battle near Shadar Logoth. Always willing to sacrifice others for her own ambition, she killed the Forsaken Osmodian to protect her hidden identity in Andor, and betrayed Balthamal in the form of Arangar by abandoning him when her compound was attacked by the forces of light. Fleeing to a faraway island to avoid punishment, she was nonetheless found and rebuked for her actions, leading her to promise the assassination of Perrine Bara as recompense. Failing once more, she was killed and reincarnated as an ugly, disfigured woman named Hesalom, meaning without forgiveness. Continuing to serve the Shadow as a lesser Forsaken, she engaged in the final battle of Tarmin Gaiden, where she manipulated the great captains leading the forces of light, causing havoc within their ranks before fighting the Aiel Avienda, attempting to entrance her with compulsion, only for the spell to backfire and strike her instead, leaving Grendal a subservient, devoted slave to Avienda. Posing as the servant Gildan, Mogidian spied on the Black Aja Aes Sedai before eventually revealing herself to become one of their leaders. Though she did much damage to many in the White Tower and beyond, her greatest enemy was the Aes Sedai Nynaeve Almira, battling against her on several occasions until she was defeated, captured in the Dream World, collared with a Terangrial Adam, and forced into servitude. With no choice but to obey her new masters, Nynaeve forced Mogidian to help Randall Thor in his fight against Ravin, after which she was collared in the Waking World as well. Though she was eventually freed by the forces of the Shadow and taken to Sheol Ghul, she faced severe punishment for these failures, both tortured and made a slave to Ishamayel in the body of Moradin. Participating in the battle near Shadar Logoth and final battle of Tarmin Gaiden, she used her skill as a spy to look in on Matrim Coffin, but was discovered and fled. After the death of Demondrid, she took control of the Sharan army, but in the end was taken prisoner by the forces of Shan Chan, who collared her with another Adom, making her a servant to Mani.
the newest Forsaken and only one who spent no time imprisoned with the Dark One. Mazrim Taim was a false dragon from Saldeia who was captured by the Aes Sedai but escaped before being gentled. Joining Randall Thor's Ashaman, he became a respected channeler and trainer to initiates, leading their forces in the Battle of Dumai's Wells. However, at some point, he was turned to the shadow by the Forsaken Demondrid, and so used his position to turn many of the Ashaman against the Dragon Reborn, even sending some to attempt his assassination. Creating chaos among their ranks, he was eventually discovered and forced to flee, re-emerging during the final battle of Tarmin Gaiden, where he fought and was killed by the Amarlin seat Egwene Alvier. Love The Wheel of Time or any other series? Then why not check out Audible, where they have the largest collection of audiobooks available. Sign up through the links below for regular membership and get a 30-day free trial, or else try Premium Plus for a 60-day trial and up to three free audiobooks. For those who prefer to read their stories, there is the Kindle Unlimited plan, where you get as many ebooks as you wish. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, along with the prequel novel and history book. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Tamika the Black Wolf, Faith the Wandering Huntress, Tom Moonstruck Waters, and Z Packwood. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.